Building is a key mechanic in Fortnite which allows players to instantly construct walls and platforms in the game world. Today we'll be recreating this mechanic from the ground up using only Unreal Engine and some C++. To get started we'll be creating a new Unreal Engine project using C++ and the default settings. I'll be calling this project Build Demo but you can call it whatever you want. I'll start off by cleaning up the default level a bit. I'm removing the standard walkway and anything else we won't need for this tutorial. We'll rebuild the lighting to fix those static shadows and let's go ahead and create a new C++ class. This class will be an actor component and we'll call it build manager component. This class will act as a system which manages what objects can be built, where they're built, and how big our grid is. It will also expose the interface for toggling our build mode and triggering build requests. Unreal Engine generates header files with two public sections by default. There's nothing wrong with this, but I prefer having one, so I'm merging these together. We'll create two new methods, toggle build mode and request build. Toggle build mode will activate and deactivate the build previews and request build will actually construct the objects. I've also added uFunction macros to these two, so if we ever wanted to call them from blueprints, we could. In our implementation file, go ahead and define the toggle build mode and request build methods. I'll also add some logging statements for now. I'm using print debug message, which will print messages within the game allowing us to see the method calls while we test. Jumping to our character definition, we'll also add a reference to our build manager component. I'm also going to set a uProperty macro, which makes this file visible in our character blueprints. You'll also notice this is a forward declaration of our build manager. This means I'll need to include the build manager header in our character implementation file. Inside of our character constructor, I'm initializing our build manager using create default sub object. Next, we'll jump down to set up player input component so we can trigger the toggle build mode and request build functions on certain key presses. For this, we'll use bind action to call our build manager component functions. Finally, we'll head back to the Unreal Editor, jump to Edit Project Settings, and scroll down to the Input section. We'll add two new action mappings using the names we define in Bind Actions. I'm binding Toggle Build Mode to the F key and Request Build to the left mouse button. We'll compile everything and if all goes well, our log messages should show up when we hit the buttons. Before we jump into the next step, I want to explain the logic behind how we'll implement our building system. The goal is to have our wall snap to the correct position as our camera moves around the player. To do this, we'll get the forward vector of the camera and multiply that by a constant. We'll add our player's location to that vector to translate it towards our player. Now our wall will orbit around the player at a fixed distance as the camera moves. All we need to do is use Unreal Engine's grid snap system to keep our object aligned to the grid. Back inside of Visual Studio, we'll start implementing our plan. In our build manager component, we'll add in some new variables. Grid size, which represents how big we want our grid. Build distance represents how far from the player we want our wall. And floor height, which is the height of the floor. Looks like it's 130 centimeters from the origin. As always, I'll make all of these U properties so we can see them in the editor. We'll also need methods to hold all of the logic for figuring out where we need to put our builds, and a boolean to track if we're in build mode or not. I'll also add a reference to the player camera so we only have to fetch it once. In our constructor, we'll set building off by default. We'll also update the toggle build mode function to flip the is building switch whenever it's called. Let's also update that logging statement to print the state of is building. I'm fetching the player's camera and begin play. This is an optimization to prevent us from having to find the camera every tick. I'll also check if it's null, just in case. In our tick component method, I'll check if we're in build mode. If we are, I'll get the next build location and rotation. 
deeper. Now I'll draw a debug box where our wall will go. I use the draw debug box method and I set the parameters so it draws the right location and rotation. This function is a beast, so I recommend referring to the documentation to better understand these parameters. Next up, let's implement the getNextBuild location and rotation methods. For our build location, we'll get the camera's forward vector, multiply that by our wall distance, and add on our player's location. We'll return a vector with the X and Y values snapped using grid snap and our floor value to make sure the build actually gets put on the floor. For rotation, we'll get the camera's rotation and return a new rotator with the pitch set to zero, the yaw set to the camera's yaw but snap to 90 degrees, and the roll set to zero. All right, let's compile what we have and give this a test run. Nice, our debug box is being snapped in front of our player in the right positions. All that's left to do is set up our walls and start spawning them in. To do this, we'll create a new actor class and call it buildable. I'll merge the public sections of this header file and add some properties. Build mesh, which will be the mesh of our wall, Preview mesh, which will be the mesh of the preview model, a collision volume so players can't walk through the wall, and two animations, a building animation and a preview removal animation. All of these will be touched on later, but for now let's tag them with the property macro. Oops, I almost forgot to forward declare our box component. Last thing, we'll add a build method and make it blueprint callable. Since we forward declared box component, we'll need to include it in our header along with the engine collision profiles. We'll need these later. I'm initializing an empty root component for us to attach our subcomponents to. This allows us to transform our meshes within blueprints. I'll create a preview and a build mesh, and then I'll attach these both to the root component. I am also disabling the build mesh's visibility by default. We'll initialize the collision volume and attach it to the root component, but we're setting the collision profile to no collision by default. Last up, let's initialize our two animations. All that's left now is to implement our build method. We'll set the build mesh to visible. We'll also set our collision volumes profile to block all. We'll also play our build mesh animation as well as the preview mesh animation. All right, let's compile everything and see if we have any errors. As a thank you for watching this ridiculously long tutorial, I've modeled, rigged, animated, and textured a wall object, which you can download using the link in the description. Let's walk through how to use it. The download comes with a mesh, some animations, a photo of what the wall should look like, and a bunch of texture files. In Unreal Engine, we'll drag in our skeletal mesh file, disable create physics assets, and set do not create materials. Drag in the two animation assets and make sure you disable import mesh. They should look like this when you're done. Finally, drag in that texture pack and let that import. We'll need three materials, one for the logs, one for the planks, and one for the screws. Import the texture file, a normal map, and the correct ambient occlusion file. The texture file goes to the base color and the normal map to the normal. For the ambient occlusion file, drag the red value to ambient occlusion, green to metal, and blue to roughness. You'll need to repeat this process for all three materials. I've sped this up for you. For the preview mesh, we'll use a translucent shader. I'm using a 3 vector with a nice shade of blue. I take the blue color and the logs texture file and then add the two values together so the color of the logs fluctuates the shade of blue. Finally, I'll set the opacity to 0.5 so it's mostly see-through. 
Once again, repeat this process for the planks and the screws. Let's apply these materials to our mesh and see how it looks. That looks good to me. Next up, we're gonna create a blueprint where we can set our buildables meshes and animations. We could do this in code, but being able to tweak location and animation parameters in blueprints is much more effective. Starting with a build mesh, I temporarily set it to visible while I set up the materials. I'll also apply all three materials, re-disable the build mesh's visibility, and repeat this process for the preview mesh. Then we'll configure the box collider to fit our wall. The last step is to make sure we set up our build and destroy animations. All that's left now is to set up our build manager. I'll quickly update my grid size to fit the size of our wall and add a configurable reference to a child of the blueprint class. This allows us to link the wood wall's blueprint to this value in the Unreal Editor. I'll also add a private variable called current build, which will be the build preview we're currently managing. In our tick method, I'll check if the current build is null. If it is, we'll spawn a new wood wall. Otherwise, we'll just update the current build's location to be in front of the player. We'll use the spawn actor method, passing in our wood wall reference as the template for what type of actors we want to spawn. In our request build method, I'll add a new guard statement to make sure we're actually in build mode. I'll also call the build method on our current build. Finally, we'll set the current build to null so we stop tracking it. All right, that should be everything. Let's compile and give it a test. Congratulations, you've just implemented the foundation of Fortnite's building mechanics. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, please leave a comment down below.